Right. Hey, everyone. I'm here with my internet bestie friend, Amanda Krill. Tell everyone hello and tell them where you're from. Hello. I um, live in Northwest Ohio. Actually, I live in the middle of a cornfield between Farmer, Ohio and Hicksville, Ohio. And um, yeah, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I have been trying to have you on my show because you have such a similar story with me, but yet different. But we both started out as a Jill of all trades. You started working for somebody big. I started working for somebody big. And then we left to do our own thing. So yeah. I think your story is so inspirational. So let's backtrack and let's set the stage for you finding your first virtual assistant job and tell everyone where you were in your life, uh, your mommy situation and all of that. All right. So it's quite the odd story. I'll just start <laughs> that way. Um, so it was 14 years ago. And like you, Emily, and actually, thank you, first of all, for having me because I love you to death. And I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, it was 14 years ago when I started my business. And at the time, virtual assistant was not really necessarily a thing that anybody really knew about, especially in Northwest Ohio. They all thought I was nuts. And, uh, but I started it out of necessity. I had $64,000 worth of credit card debt that my husband didn't know about. And I was trying to pay it off before he did not because I was trying to necessarily be like subversive or anything, but just because that's quite a weight to put on somebody. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, you know, find something that I could do. But at the time I had a six month old, a two year old and a three year old and the cost of childcare uh, is outrageous. I mean, even 14 years ago, it was completely outrageous. And I tried substitute teaching for a while, but I made $15 a day after paying for childcare. So I was like, this is not going to work. I've got to figure something else out. So in before I had kids, I was an actual in-person assistant slash producer at a TV station. And when I very first saw the term virtual assistant, I was like, I can do that. Like, yeah. totally. I did that like in person, why can't I do that virtually? And I've always been good with computers. So it seemed like a natural thing to do. And, but, you know, 14 years ago, there weren't job boards. There was no Fiverr. There was no, you know, Upwork. None of these things existed at the time. And I found my very first client on Craigslist, which sounds <laughs> scary because people now get murdered by meeting people on Craigslist. Right. But I actually never met him in person. He was from California. Mm -hmm. And he was this weird dude that was trying it. Basically, his wife had left him for his best friend and he wanted to create a website slash program to help couples like connect better oh. so that what happened to him wouldn't happen to other people. But he was also very self-defeating. So like every time I would get him a meeting, like I got him meetings with Humana and all these great big, huge health insurance companies because the idea was that we would get them to like, you know, help fund the project and then they could give it to their members because when you're ha health, when you're happy, you're more healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But he would blow every single time that I would get these meetings. He would like totally shoot himself in the foot and mess it all up. So I got <laughs> real tired of working with him real fast. Yeah. And he introduced me to hiremymom.com, which this was, I had worked with him for two years before this Oh. Well, a year and a half before this part came up. And so HireMyMom.com, we were looking for a CEO for the company because he, like I said, couldn't deliver when it was time to like really deliver. So he wanted somebody to do this for him. And he thought a woman would be the best option. Intro HireMyMom.com where he had me post a job. And I was like, wait a minute, what is this? <laughs> so that is where I met um, the big client that I had. I was Marie Forleo. I worked with her for two years. I was her, started as a virtual assistant, moved into web design, helped her build the original B-School. Um, just like all these crazy things happened. And then I kind of left and just moved into just doing branding and web design. And that's what I've been doing for the last 12 years. So Okay. I'm going to yeah. backtrack to a couple things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all. <laughs> What were you getting paid right at like 14 years ago as a virtual assistant? Do you remember? Eight, eight dollars an hour. Oh my gosh. And, and we got to start somewhere, right? Right. Well, he promised me that 
what when because funding was imminent that was his favorite phrase funding is imminent <laughs> and when we get when the project gets funded i whatever i have paid you in the time that you've worked with me i will double it when we get funded but it's 14 years later and he still owes me like fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> so <laughs> i don't really expect to ever get it but it opened doors and led me down a path that i otherwise would not have gone down and that, I mean, that's what I say about my debt is, you know, it was this huge mistake, this huge, crazy thing that I did. And I really don't even know what I spent it on. Um, I wrote a book about it and you can read, read the whole story. But um, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have done this and done this and done this and I wouldn't be where I am now. So it's all good. Right. Yeah. I love that you own the mistakes and the journey of life because it's not going to be the straight, obvious linear path and you don't have the vision when you're at this certain stage in life and starting out as a virtual assistant, you kind of just have to start and see where it takes you. And for some people, that's really uncomfortable. People oh, yeah. get so uncomfortable with that. And I get it. Uh, I, I do get it. But you have to kind of let that go and go with the flow a little bit. So you were working for $8 an hour. And he then he he kind of almost introduced you to your next client, which is also like a fairy tale story. Right. But, um, what I was going to ask you was when you started working for Marie, what was your experience in WordPress? Zero. I didn't even know what WordPress was when I very <laughs> first started working with her. I had no idea. But she was like, OK, so I can only because this was like way back. The only thing she had done was written the book, um, How to Make Men Want You. I think that's what it's called. Um, okay. She'd written that book and she just started her coaching business. So she was literally no one at the time. And I mean, everybody's someone. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Not she working. said, I can only afford you or I can afford a web person, but I need these ch changes done to my website. Do you think you can figure it out? And I was like, heck, yes, I can. And then Google became my best friend because I did not know anything about it at all. OK, time out. Every single student of mine stuck on WordPress, challenged by anything tech related. We all start there. And it, it yep. happens. It, like it creeps in all the time every day with different tech things. But Amanda learned WordPress by clicking and figuring it out. I did the same thing for Jennifer Allwood. I did not know what the heck I was doing. But every time I logged into that dashboard, I clicked around. I figured out how to take things out of the trash <laughs> really quick, how to auto recover things really quick if I made a mistake. But that, I mean, that didn't happen that much. But I learned by clicking around and you have to jump on the challenge and you say, yes, yep. I will try. I will figure it out. And Marie knew with you, she's not paying a hundred dollar an hour web person to help her. Like she knew that. Yep. And and that is probably like the difference with like a good client and a bad client. But she respected that. Yep. And as long as you guys are communicating, it's all good. Yep. So then your WordPress skill, like well, how did they take off? Like do you remember? But yeah, like the problem with hers was it was like baptism by fire on that one because it was not traditional at all. Like the theme was completely custom built and mm -hmm. I don't know PHP. I still don't know PHP. I know enough to be dangerous and like mess around with things, but I could never do it from scratch. Um, oh, so yeah, hers was right there. Hers yes, you could. <laughs> I could, but I don't really want to take the time to learn it. But like I know enough to be dangerous and I've learned enough lessons just way back on her site is always make a copy of everything before you change it <laughs> because then you can <laughs> then you can just restore it and everything is fine that's but, why the duplicate plugin is my favorite yes <laughs> i put it in my dress for so i'm like everybody you need this plugin just copies yep. everything and i didn't even think about it as using it as a backup but i'll do that with sales pages or uh waitlist pages and you know, but yes. Yeah. So you yeah, just, no. okay, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Keep no, going. No, you're fine. So I just basically, you know, just dove in and figured it out. And then I did my own website from le what I learned from doing hers, because at the time I didn't have one. And um, then a friend of hers needed a website and I did that one. And then somebody else needed a website. And then she had this small coaching program and like three or four of them needed a website and I was cheap and it helped build my portfolio. So I just kept, yeah. you know, making new websites for people until I got really good at it. And 
realized, you know, I could be charging a lot more and I could actually make money off of just this. So at that point, I was still working with her, but Mm -hmm. moving more in the direction of just doing, you know, websites for people. And I was making enough doing websites for people that it was starting to be hard to work for her because she wasn't paying me that much. Like I would be like, I could do a website in a week and make this much, or I could work 40 hours for you. And I make half of that. Like, I can't sustain this. Like I can't, I like, I love working with you, but uh, (laughs) not working. You do have to kind of shift where the money is and, and, you get in that situation, or at least I've been in that situation where the clients who are paying me the least amount, I they're lower on my priority stack. I don't get to their stuff. Absolutely. And I fact, but if you're not paying me what that time is worth, you're the last thing I get done. And the client clients who get that, who understand that, are the ones who give me raises without me asking because they yeah. want to keep me and they know I'm booking out. So yeah. Do you, can you tell us what you, she was paying you way back when? Oh, well, she started out paying me $13 an hour and which was an increase from my $8 an hour. So that was great. But by the time I was done with working with her, she was like, we were up to $18 an hour. And I was like, I'm making like 50 to 75 on an hour. You know, when I would take a website project and break it down into how many hours it took me, I was making between 50 and $75 an hour. So I was like, I can't work for $18 an hour. Like that doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's such a waste of my time. Was it hard to quit? Uh, I don't know where she was in her business and I don't know her very well. I'm not in B score or anything, but was it hard to quit somebody you knew was going places or did you even know she was going places at the time? Like explain that like letting go process because we have a hard time with that over here. Yeah, no, I, it was very hard. And I was, I did know she was going places like she had, she had done, I think there were, we, I was with her through two versions, the first two versions of B-School, and she had done her Rich, Happy, and Hot live live event twice. No, three times. I was at the third one. And it was just there that I was just like, this is the scariest thing I've ever done. Because, like, work, just being her assistant and being part of the whole B-School group, got me so much work. Just the fact that, you know, everybody wanted to work with me because I was her assistant. Um, I had more work than I knew what to do with. And I was afraid if I left, like there goes that connection. Yeah. You know, I can still say, well, I was Marie's assistant. And they're like, well, yeah, you were. And (laughs) why aren't you now? But I just didn't want to be an assistant forever. You know, I wanted to move on and do my own thing. And so it was hard, but it was time. Yeah. Time to go on. I felt very much the same way. I got to the point where I think, well, I could have, I was being offered a full-time job without the full-time <laughs> money. Yeah, right. And I just, an entrepreneurial spirit in me, like it just was never going to be happy working full-time for somebody. And I just need a lot more control. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm having way more fun in my own business, but it was really hard to cut that safety net, that bread and butter. And you're absolutely right. The connections have been yeah. hard and I still get connections, but I know it's not the same as when I, you know, was really part of the team and on the backside. But honestly, yeah. I, I didn't, I don't, I don't need any of that now, you right. know, it was so yeah. scary. but I have my own reputation and I also didn't want to be like coattail off of that either. Like I'm very careful when I bring that up and so are you. Yeah. That helped with your experience and got you all that WordPress knowledge, which is amazing. So I I want to talk about different aspects of your business, but for now I do have a couple of my own students who want to niche down into web design. Can you tell us a little bit what that part of your business looks like now and how you work with clients or maybe what you charge or just any insight you can give to encourage them? Yeah. So up until, well, January, February, I was charging between $1,500 and $3,000 for a website. And the upper end is for e-commerce sites. The lower end was for, you know, just more like a brochure site. Okay. Until I did coaching with a gal who has known me for a very long time and who I've actually worked with, like as I did when she was, she's also a web person. And when she 
um, had too much work, she would have me help her do some stuff a few years ago. And so we were doing business, like I had hired her to be my business coach and I was in a mastermind for, with that, um, with other people. And she was like, okay, I'm just going to say this. I know your skill level because I've worked with you and you've done work for me. Um, you aren't charging enough, like at all. And part of the reason why I think you're struggling to get clients, because I mean, for a, with web design, you know, it's very up and down. Like you'll have more work than you need, then you have no work. And I was, for the last couple of years, it's been very dramatic. Like for three months, I'll have 10 sites. And then for three months, I have one site. And she's like, I really think that you're not staying steady because you aren't charging what you're actually worth. People question your skill set because you're not, if you've been doing it this long, you should be charging more than this. So I very, very scarily, like I was, this was even more scary to me than leaving Marie was raising my rates. So now I charge between 4,500 and 8,500, but it, in, there's a bit of coaching and like consultation with it of telling people, you know, guiding people more than just doing what they want for web design. So I think that's the difference is that I have brought so much experience with me that I know exactly what to tell people. No, don't do that because of this. And I think that's where that difference in price lies. And since I upped my rates, I have been so busy. Like I have so many website clients right now that I don't even like I'm being very picky about who I say yes to because there's more than enough and there it's really intensive now because I'm bringing more to it than just here's your pretty website. Bye. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome because I know so many clients who come to me very disappointed after their website has been created and yeah. it's usually some dude. <laughs> I'll just say it as it is who plugged and chugged the information in and yeah then like left them high and dry. And I don't think there was a lot of thought behind the business and a lot of the things you seem to bring to the table. So this is amazing. It's kind of like combining your, your areas of expertise into one service. And I'm so yeah. proud of you for charging that much. That's awesome. Well, I was, I, the one gal that I just started working with about a month and a half ago, we're almost done with her site. And um, before she took like six weeks to decide. And I was just like, oh, she's not going to go with me. But then she came back finally. She's like, I talked to four different people and you charge the most. But honestly, I feel like you bring the most to the table. So I'm going to go with you. And I was Yay! pretty shocked about it. But then last night she sent me an email and she's like, I am so pleased that I picked you. And I, I put the testimonial on my uh, Facebook page because I'm this is not word for word. But basically it was, I'm so excited. And I actually, you make me feel like I know what I'm doing. And like, I was like, yes, like that is like the best compliment I think I've ever gotten. So I was so excited about it. Oh my gosh. That's like brings like tears to my eyes because when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to pause Time out. podcast editor, Emily Porter. That was a really good sound bite. You make me feel like I know what I'm doing. Hang on. I got a crying kid. What's wrong? Well, tell, tell her not to hit. Go lay down on the couch. Get your blankie. We'll edit that out of the podcast. <laughs> no worries. That's, that's going to be in the bloopers. I think I have more fun in my bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the ultimate compliment. I that That is just amazing. And I know that people expect a lot from their website. It's their baby. They really want it to represent them. And yeah. It takes this other level of business to really like bring that out and understand them. So that kind of brings me to what you're doing as far as business coaching. Yeah. So let's talk about that and what that looks like for you and how that came about. Suddenly, I guess, is, I guess that's the only way I do things lately is like something pops in my head, then it's done. Like just, and I don't stop until it's done. So a few months ago, I, I was doing some more life coaching kind of thing and um, for moms and realized that where my, like, I still like working with moms and I still like helping them figure out ways to, you know, tame the chaos in their lives so that they can go after their dreams. But what I really love doing is uh, helping women who have been running a business, but 
like, and probably for a while they've been running a business, but all they're really doing is getting by. They're like not living the dream. They're not like bringing in enough to do whatever they want, whenever they want. They're like kind of struggling a little bit and things are just meh. Like it's, it's working, but it's not really, really working well. So I came up with this course and it's actually like a course coaching hybrid situation. And in the first part of it, it's called business breakthrough for the rebel curious. And in the first part of it, we talk about a lot of woo woo stuff, like your astrological sign and your Myers Briggs personality and um, your Enneagram. And actually I'm going to put a little bit of human design in now too, because I just, just started dipping my toes into that whole idea. And it's pretty incredible, but looking at those parts of yourself and figuring out exactly what you need to do to run your business in a way that works for you. Because like, I don't know about you, but I've taken like 8 million courses, paid so much money for courses. And then they're like, Oh, I have the perfect blueprint. This is exactly what you need to do to do this. And I get through it. I'm like, like, okay, that worked for you, but this is not going to work for me. Like that doesn't even work in my brain. So in my course, I want people to like really look at what works for them and create a way to work that fits their personality and their sign and all of that stuff. Then we look at the systems in your business and what you're not using and what you should be using. And like one of the things that that we're talking about right now in the course is money that if you aren't keeping really good track of your money, you're basically, you have a hobby that sometimes pays your bills. You don't have a real business because you need to track that stuff and know where it's coming in, know what's going out, you know, those kind of systems, getting those in place so that you don't have to think so much about your business. Yeah. And then the, the last part of it is um, learning how to take more risks and be a little bit more of a rebel with your business and not just always doing what the most successful people are doing because, yeah, that worked for them, but it probably won't work for you. They had their own unique set of circumstances and they took risks and did things at just the right time. And if you learn how to do that for yourself, you'll, you know, find success too. So oh my gosh, I love, I love that so much because so many people are just, just to put it bluntly, they're just copying each other. Yes. And I feel like there's just a lack of originality and it's because they're following the gurus who are like, this is what you do on Instagram. And there's yep. so much room to be yourself and attract yep. your audience. And I think a lot of times that's why people are held back because they're just copying everybody. And of course they're not successful. Right. And if you look at the people who are successful, they didn't copy somebody. They did it. They like took what they learned. Yeah from successful people and like tweaked it to be their own thing. They didn't copy anybody. Like I know Marie specifically when she was, you know, trying to build her brand and stuff, Richard Branson was one of the people that she really admired. And Frank Kern was another person that she really admired the way that they were doing business. And she took what she learned from them and mashed it up with her own personality and did her own thing. She didn't just, copy what they had done. And that was a real valuable thing I learned from her is that you have to do your own thing, you know, or you're just a, like a shadow following Mm -hmm. behind the other people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. And I'm constantly trying to think with my team, like, Oh, you know, they tell me to do it this way, but I'm like, I just can't, I can't, this feels right. This is what (laughs) I'm going to do. I'm just going to put on the blinders and not pay attention. And just try to make it work. But I mean, yep. God, it can be so distracting though when you see these people who are successful, but you're right. Like sometimes it worked six years ago because the algorithm was different. Like they, yeah, they like happen to grow their audience really fast on Facebook, but no one's, sh- you know, they're not telling everyone how much money they put in ads. <laughs> right, <time>. exactly. <laughs> and that's another thing I like to tell all of my people that I work with is don't compare yourself where you are right now to where they are right now, because you have no idea how many years they put in before they were actually finally successful. I know she had like six years from when she first wrote her book to when she finally launched B-School. Like there's a six year period there that people don't even think about or know about. Yeah. It, you know. It's, she was all she put in the work, doing side jobs and tr- testing different things and seeing what worked yep. for her. So, um, yep. I did read her book, and I had no idea that's why she's always dancing on Instagram. She, <laughs> the fitness videos <laughs> yeah. like, way too perky for me, and now I'm like, oh, she likes to dance. Okay, now I I accept it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, get it. I get it. 
So, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. I was going to ask you something about that. Oh, the VA world. Oh my yeah. God. So your message goes with mine because I don't think there's just one way to be a VA. I think we all have a different set of strengths yep. and it's really distracting. Even for me, I'm seeing people copy with the unicorn thing. There's like a couple of people copying that. I'm like, dang it. But you know, <laughs> we all have, my mantra is we all have something different. Like you know, my background, my industries, my work experience, my education is different than another person. So each one of us can be a unicorn for some other business owner. Like we can be Absolutely. different and can not copy what other VAs are doing. Hang on. What? Can you put TV on? Um, can you go ask a big kid? I'm doing a Facebook live. <laughs> Just take your blankie. Like you can't see with my little short screen, like no one can see the kids coming in and out of the shot when we have a dual <laughs> screen. Uh, so yeah, see what I loved about you and I was on your podcast a while ago, but you were really talking about giving moms another passion other than just, you know, uh, taking care of their kids, like not losing that sense of self. You were really big at encouraging moms and yeah. your slogan is just boldly go. I mean, that's the name of your podcast. Tell everyone yeah. about this project you have going on too. Yeah. So the Just Boldly Go project, um, it actually started several years ago as a travel blog because I'm a big advocate of getting out of your comfort zone and going places. And I think it really changes your world and expands things. Uh, and then somehow it kind of morphed into bigger things. And then the, the lady I was talking about earlier who told me I needed to raise my rates, I did have JustBoldlyGo.com and AmandaKrill.com. And that was like coaching and web design. And she's like, you got to mash those things up, like put it all together. And I was like, I don't understand how. And she like helped me figure out a way to do that. So that was really valuable. But like my whole goal is to help women and a few cool guys who <laughs> who aren't like, you know, gross guys, but cool ones um, to figure out ways to uh, Create a life that you love and you can't wait to get out of bed for every single day. And if that is in business, great. And if it's being a mom, that's great. And I've actually been struggling with how to, to say that without saying um, I want women to be more than just a mom because I there's nothing wrong with being a mom at all. I love being a mom. But for some of us, you know, there's more in there. We have bigger, big things that we want to do in addition to being a mom. And my big like what I always say to everybody is um, take your kids along with you. Let them see you be successful. Let them see you fail. Let them see you trying things that are new and scary. And um, it emboldens them. So the bigger, bolder life that you live, it helps your kids be emboldened to live a big, bold life for themselves. That's kind of what the whole point of the project is. I, and I, I love that too. I am my, I'm stepping out on a limb here. This is a little judgy of me, but I live in an area where everybody has like six or seven kids, big Catholic community here. And I see so many, and I get it. I'm tired. I have four, but I see so many zoned out moms and yeah. they don't have anything left for conversation. And I'm not saying you need to boldly go into a business. I'm right. just, and I think you're saying this too. We're saying find yourself and don't lose how don't lose her. Whatever yeah. that is, maybe it's just taking the time for like self-care, which is a word I hate, but like taking the time to read a book for you instead of another parenting book or homeschool book or, you know, just yeah. start yourself in the process completely. Cause I don't know why, why do we re really even care? What, like, what's, what's the point behind this? Help me answer this. I'm going <laughs> deep here. Well, you know, the, what really inspired me to do the whole Just Boldly Go project is that so many women around here talk to me about what I'm doing and they think it's amazing. And they're like, but I could never do that. And I'm like, but why not? You have kids. So what? I have kids. I have three kids and my kids were all born within four years. So like there, it was intense and awful when they were little. I have PTSD from it, but it's like, I did it anyway. Like you have to do it anyway. And it's, I'm scared for a lot of them that by the time they get to the point where their kids are gone, then they're like, you know, they're, they've been spent so much time not being themselves that by the time they get to there, they don't know who they are anymore. 
And specifically, I was driving down the road in a nearby town and I stopped at a stoplight and this woman is sitting there and she's just like, her kids are playing in a pool and she's sort of watching them. She's not even staring at a phone or anything. She's just like sitting there with a dead look in her eyes. And I was like, I feel so bad for her. Like, this is her life. She's probably sitting there thinking, this is not what I thought my life was going to be like. Like, I love my kids, but this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel for me in the military wife world, so many of us lose it and give it up for our husbands, which we would do 10,000 times over. I mean, there's so many perks, but to sit around and hear book club turn into a bitch session because people are unhappy. And I'm like, I can't stand the complaining when you could do something about it. Right. Granted, you can complain to me. That's okay. But when it becomes repetitive and you're not taking action and there is other things to do to find your passion. And I guess for me, that was kind of it. Like seeing military wives. I mean, I was there. I remember going to Germany, our very first duty station together, like fresh out of college. I got this like journalism broadcast degree. I'm all excited. And I get there and all the young uh, young women are working in the bad office and I wanted to cry because I'm like, I do not, I did not just do that to work in a VAT office yeah. and be stuck nine to five when I'm in freaking Germany, you right. know, and it was everybody who had this like brand new diamond ring and I just wanted to cry. Yeah. <laughs> I I did. And I got a job at Chili's. We had a Chili's opening up on base, which was like a big deal in Germany. But, um, you know, I was like, I know I'm settling. I, but I kept my eyes open for other things. And every time I saw the opportunity, I jumped. I ha- And it was scary as hell. So right. scary. But it got me where I am now. And I even, had, I even had a scary Craigslist job. Did I ever tell you about that? I don't think so. I love that. Uh, we were stationed in Quantico, Virginia, right outside DC for nine months and nobody would hire me. And I even tried to work for free for the Marine magazine and they wouldn't hire me because I'm an Air Force wife. Oh, Can you not? Uh-huh. Like uh-huh. discrimination, right? And I'm like, I'll work for free. I just want to like keep my brain going. But I saw this weird job in Craigslist. I can't, I wish I had the original posting and I went for it. And turns out it was working with HGTV. <laughs> like doing oh. Like doing video production. And I mean, if I awesome. had, there was no meeting in person. Like I didn't have to go to a street corner or anything, you know, like it was all online. But like I wouldn't have known if I hadn't have tried, you right. know, it was it was kind of like a peon job. But still, it was super cool to, yeah. to do that when we were just at home. I was just sitting at home. So, yeah. That's one thing that I always tell women all the time is you may right now at this moment have no idea what you're passionate about. I didn't start my VA business because I was passionate about helping people with their business. I did it because I needed the money and it turned in like I morphed it into something that I'm super passionate about, but I would never have gotten here if I hadn't tried that. Like you have to keep trying things until the thing fits like, and it will, it'll, you'll get there, but like you have to keep trying until you get there and, but you're not going to get there if you don't try anything. Yeah. Do you remember what you said to get hired by these first two gigs? Like, do you remember anything about your post or your reply? I remember Gary was the Craigslist guy. Um, when I replied and somebody else replied and he told us that he would test each of us out for one week. So for a week, he had both of us. And I was like, oh, that's no problem. I'm going to win. And <laughs> like, I, I did like that. I don't know what happened to the other person. And uh, I'm <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I wish you would have picked the other person, but <laughs> it, it all worked out for the best. With right. Marie, I responded to her hiremymom.com uh, post that she had put out there and just said, I'm the person you're looking for, period. And, uh, you know, gave references and gave like I had done some writing for a. actually that was what I did before I was a VA just to make a little bit of extra cash was like I did some writing for uh, like I did TV reviews of different shows for websites and some of them I got paid for some of them I just did for free for the clout and I gave her those samples and she was like I love how sassy you are I love that you didn't like come in and say oh I think maybe I'm the person you were just like it's me. And so she hired me. So confident. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I see that too. And I catch myself in my own writing, especially when I'm giving advice and I'm saying, I think, and then blah, blah, blah. And quite often when I have time, I go back and edit that out because it's my, my almost like my nature to, you know, not want to be so assertive and yeah. like, wait, this is dumb. I know. But even your job posting, people will read between the words and that so, I think shows lack of confidence completely. And I probably sometimes had too much confidence and, <laughs> but in that case, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So, okay. I wanted you to tell everyone about the how you got into debt and tell them that story because <laughs> you have been so scrappy and I know, I know that part of it was you had another side hustle that you were doing and overspending. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, it actually very, very, very first started. I was um, selling stuff on eBay before my son was born. And that like, it just wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it that much. And I saw something about mystery shopping and thought, well, I'll, I'll see what this is all about. Cause that sounds fun. And so that's really where it started was that I was mystery shopping, which it actually was a thing. I would get gigs for McDonald's and Arby's and all these other places. But the one that like killed me was Staples because apparently I have a weird addiction to office supplies and like they would give you $10 to spend in the store and you'd go in, you'd buy something and then report on their website about your experience. And, you know, like you had to say who your the associate was who helped you and all that other stuff. So $10 is what my, my budget was. And I'd spend like 80 and that adds up after a while, especially when they're only paying you $10 for the job. And I had little kids and I had all of these, like I grew up with my parents not having very much money. So I like totally overcompensated for that and just would buy them whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. And uh, then I started putting groceries on credit cards because I didn't actually have enough coming in because the mystery shopping was only paying $10 and I was spending $80. And it was just this great big awful snowball that kind of like went nuts, basically. Yeah. And you found yourself in this situation where you needed work. You took care of it. Yeah. You, uh, walk me through the process. I remember listening to this on your podcast before, but you were talking about realizing that being a jack of all trades, Jill of all trades wasn't for you either. Like very quickly. So you started working and you realized, I'm trying to remember this story. Do you know? I'm not sure sure which one you mean, but that is accurate. I did realize very quickly that I'm not like, so with a VA, you should obviously be good at testing things and details and things like that. At least, you know, that specific kind of VA that I was. And I am not, and I am not good at proofreading because I read things the way that I think they should say instead of what they actually say. So typos would slip through and all these things just just I wasn't really good with that part of it. And that's kind of how I moved more into web design because I was really good at that. Yeah. So, you know, it's just figuring out, diving in and trying it and figuring out which parts do work for you and which parts don't. And, you know, I'm much more, I guess, I think many VAs tend to be, or the good VAs are the ones who can pay attention to de details and who can be more analytical about things. And even though at the beginning, I would have never said that I was a creative person, it turns out I actually am. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, my brain just works way more on the right side than on the left side. So I had a, I struggled with getting some of those tasks done well. I think this is so wise of you to have realized this and moved yourself early on to the work that you were good at. Mm -hmm. And I think this should be encouraging for everyone out there because I know some of the VAs that have taken my course and are doing like all of the things for business owners. I'm like, it's okay to not be great at all of them. Yeah discover that about yourself and the next client you don't do that or you they add somebody else to the team that can help with that uh did, didn't you take a course to be a VA too no I didn't Did not it? at all just totally made it up as I went along and just whatever somebody asked me to do I figured out how to do it yeah and you just figured it out that's amazing and then tell me about how you were writing this book because the book first of all the book title's awesome i've i've talked about it inside our facebook event but um tell everyone your book title the new one or, or the, the one i already wrote the debt one first 
Okay, so my book is called Mom Versus Debt, How I Paid Off $64,000 in Under Three Years Without Becoming a Stripper. Without no stripping involved. <laughs> Which now I have some friends, like Facebook acquaintances who are strippers, and I feel a little bad about the title. But it was really just um, a joke, basically, because I did a an article for thepennyhoarder.com. I wrote an article about my debt for that website and the I get I don't know 400 and some comments on it and the majority of them were that I had to be lying about how I paid it off that I had to have become a stripper and I was like no like I'm gonna knock this no. objection out in the title <laughs> I'm like five foot four and uh mom sized I'm not a stripper <laughs> Oh my gosh. So it really did take three years and it was, was it mainly the yeah. VA business that paid off the debt? Yep. Virtual assistant, being a virtual assistant basically paid off the debt. The last, I think I had $5,000 left to pay off when I moved over into the web design and within a month and a half I had it paid off. No problem. Oh my gosh. That is so disciplined and what an amazing story. And you didn't, you didn't know that this was going to be the outcome, but like you were determined to pay off that debt. Like, in, oh yeah, you see your podcast and several episodes of that, and you were like going to find a way, hell or high water. <laughs> I was, and like I said, you know, I I didn't not tell my husband because I was trying to be a jerk or anything, but simply because he was a teacher and he hated his job, and I couldn't put that on top of his already hating his job like I can't even imagine how awful that would have been for him he did find out um, but I had it paid down to 48,000 by the time he had it he found out about it and we did almost get divorced but he he was like you know what it's just debt and then the more he thought about it the more he's like wait a minute how much money are you making and <laughs> then we were then he eventually left his job but now he runs his own business too so everything yeah. worked out doesn't he work from home now? He uh, does construction. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, because he's shifted to something he loved. Like, he almost got encouraged by you fighting something you're passionate about, and he got motivated to do that, too. Right? I definitely was able to help him get out of teaching, and that was all that mattered. Because <laughs> it was not, he did not like it. <laughs> How about this new book that came out? I think you're a co-author on it, right? Am I right? Yeah, there's a um, You've Got This Boss Mama. I'm a co-author on that. And then I'm writing a book called Feisty and Noncompliant. And that's it's like a little sections about women throughout history who have done big, crazy, amazing things. And um, I only have it like a quarter of the way done and it's already going to like be like 200 pages. So I don't know. It's going to end up being like this thick. <laughs> I might have to do volume one and volume two. Oh my God, this is awesome. How do you find time to do this? Like, um, I know at the moment, I haven't written in it in two weeks. I haven't written anything for it in two weeks. And I wrote intensely for two weeks. And before that, I left it go for six months. So, okay. like, I get fits of inspiration and, like, write, 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 write. And then I let it go for a little while. How did you work in your first book? I'm curious about the whole book writing process. How did you work that in with your full-time job? Or <laughs> Yay. Yeah. So, okay. It was published a year and a few days ago and I started it. So January, 2019, I started writing it. It's only like a hundred pages. It's not a very long book. And, um, but I started it in January and I wrote a little bit and then I wrote a little bit and then I wrote a little bit and I got to April and I like quit and didn't write anything else. Kind of forgot actually that I was even working on it. Then July rolls around and somehow it pops back up in my mind and I get it out and I read what I wrote. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good. And <laughs> just ridiculous, but it's what happened. And then I finished the rest of it in a week. So yeah, I just, I have weird habits when it comes to things like that. Like I'll be very intense about it and then let it go for a while and then come back to it and I think that's okay that like lets it bake and lets it sit with you and then you're ready to wrap it up. Yeah. Because there's times when I'm like with the feisty non-compliant one, like I have one woman that I'm trying to focus on and it, whatever I write, it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't sound right. It's just not coming out right. And then I'll just like leave her and come back in a week or so. And then I'll have figured it out without even really thinking about it. I'll just be like, Oh no, that sucked. And like scrap it and start over. And <laughs> 
Oh my God. Figure it out. Cool. I do have a bunch of teachers in this group who are writers who are interested in this process. So it's just kind of fun to hear somebody. I bet you, did you ever think you were going to write a book? Was that ever? I've always, I'm, no, I actually never thought I would. And I actually never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing at all. But um, being, you know, like talking to people about things and making videos and all this stuff, I never saw any of this coming. But like, I always wrote, wrote a lot when I was young. But even in college, like I would not... I would turn papers in and then like run out the door because I didn't want to actually like see anybody read the stuff that I wrote. I was very self-conscious about it. And now like I, I kind of got over that, but, <laughs> but it took me a while. Like it took me a really long time. I can relate to that. Even when I show, I don't know, my sales page copy to someone, I'm like, Oh God, I'm so right. scared. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I think there's some like head trash with that and some scared, being scared of rejection. Yeah. Not in criticism, but you know, when you're showing it to the right people, like they can only help you when they're right. Exactly. When I, was, <laughs> I always have people read it, like before I even send it off, like before I got my, I, uh, a, a girl, the publisher who did my mom versus dad book is actually somebody that I know who has a small boutique publishing company. And that's the, you got this boss mama was through her also. And before I sent it to her, I had like three people read it. And I was like, now tell me the truth. <laughs> like, how right. bad is it? And they're like, no, 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 no. It's like perfect. And they had, you know, gave me a couple little small edits and stuff and obviously proofreading because I'm not good with that part. But then I sent it to her and she's like, where did this come from? Like, when did you do this? And I was like, last week. <laughs> She's right. like, oh my gosh. I just, I, I can't get over it. I mean, the fact that you had a problem, you found a solution, you put the pedal to the metal and paid off that debt. I mean, that's, that is a huge accomplishment. And that should be so inspiring for anyone here in the group. They're looking for ways to start, you know, over online, to start working, to find their place and to know it's possible. Because we see all these like success stories like, oh, she made a million dollars online and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, this is like, Amanda's a real person, you all. She really, really did this by doing the work behind the scenes. And then it led her to other places. I just, I just can't get over your story. It's too, it's too beautiful. And I love to see what you're doing now, trying to help your community. You're trying to build a workspace for women to be able to work. Um, are you, have you bought the building yet? I, I guess I should have asked you before. I no, I haven't. I haven't gotten the grant. The grant hasn't come through yet. Let's say it that way. But the building just did just drop four thousand dollars so i'm like yeah nobody else is gonna buy it though because it belongs to me they yeah. just don't know it yet um but yeah no like i think that people just need to understand that it's you just have to keep moving forward like even if you fell down and things are bad and you have sixty four thousand dollars of debt just find a way to keep moving forward and you'll get there like yeah. it's just it's kind of that easy and not that easy. But yeah. I will say that, you know, I've been in business for 14 years. And because I started as a virtual assistant, I always think, oh, I can just do all of this because I know how to do it all. And I, you know, I can do it all. But I just hired a VA last week because I realized that even though I can do it all, I don't have time to do it all anymore. And she has like, taken so much off my plate and I warned her right at the beginning I'm like I have to warn you that I move at like lightning speed like once I get something in my head it's fast like I mean and I don't I don't know how to say it enough to make you understand it and then I told her like 10 days before I hired her I had the idea to make a planner like a 2021 planner I've been wanting to for a really long time and I finally figured out how I wanted it to be and in 10 days, I had it done. And it's 882 pages long. And wow. she's like, oh. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I need to under, I need you to understand exactly how fast I move when things get in my head because it might be hard to keep up. And she's like, I think I can do it. So, so far, so good. It's been really great so far. I didn't realize you hired someone. Tell me, where did you find her? So actually I posted something on boss moms and I was not looking for a VA at all. I was just needing somebody to make some Instagram templates for me for, a, for my course. Actually, I wanted to give them to people in the course and I didn't have time to make them. I was like, I, I don't have time for this. So I just paid her money to do it. And then she's like, Oh, and I, I'll, I'm a virtual assistant. And actually what happened was I posted on boss moms 
saying I need somebody to make Instagram templates. I got like 30 replies. And this one girl messaged me directly and said, here's what I, you know, here's samples. Here's how much I charge. I can have it done by tonight. And I was like, all right. (laughs) So I hired her on the spot because I didn't want to go look through all the other people. And she got it done so fast and it was so perfect. And I was just like, okay, so what else do you do? (laughs) She's like, well, I edit podcasts and I can do this and this and this. I'm like, I need you. Like I've needed you for so long and here you are. So that's that's kind of how it happened. (laughs) This little VA business owner love story. And I love, absolutely love that she got her foot in the door doing one little task. Yep. Just one thing. And I was like, Jill, you're, you're exactly what I've been looking for. <laughs> so, I was so excited. I told you. She was able to say that in a nice way that's probably, you know, not salesy, but like, yeah, what, like when you find that you work well with somebody, you know, yep. you've got to scoop that person up. So, yep, exactly. I'm excited for you because I know between, you know, we've talked and you needed one, right? And I knew you were yeah. looking for one. And same thing with my business. I can do it all, but I, I don't have time to do it all. And, yep having people to just like take care of stuff. Cause I think you and I are so like, I move lightning fast as well. And I get the idea. I want it executed. And I, it's not that you, there's just certain personality types who don't work at that speed and are uncomfortable with that. And they're slower processors and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a place on it for that person. But when it comes to more like the creative side of the business and some of the implementation, it's it's not the right person. So knowing that about what you, yourself and what you needed was very wise because I see a lot of business owners try to hire, but they don't even realize that like fundamental yeah. thing about themselves and how they work. I had said, you know, I had told you that I was looking for a VA and then I got overwhelmed by the whole process. I was like, I can't, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then when she fell in my lap, I, you know, and I asked her what else she did. And she's like, well, what do you want? What do you need help with? And I was like, I don't know. And then I sat down and made a list of these are the tasks that I resist or are just like bogging me down. And I don't have, like, I don't execute them well because I don't have time for them. And these, like my podcast, for instance, And I'm so glad she's doing this for me because I have eight episodes recorded and ready to go. And I don't want to edit them. So I just don't. And that's so ridiculous. Like they're there, they're ready to go. And so I gave that to her today and said, here's what I need you to do. (laughs) And I uploaded all of the audios to Google Drive and she is going to do them for me. And then I don't have to worry about it anymore. This is a, such good insight to how the business owner works. I think so many of us are scared about that. But quite honestly, the business owner doesn't know. I have a no. hard time communicating, like taking the time to communicate what I want sounds painful. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I'm just like, I don't know. Can't you just tell me what I need? <laughs> yeah. so, the fact that she was patient, worked with you, extracted it from you. Yeah. Uh, Awesome. Because we all have tasks that are in our judgery zone. There's things we prioritize. And absolutely with me, it has to do with my mood or how long it took a time I have, or do I feel like writing? And you know, yeah. so gosh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, me too. It's worked out really, really. I mean, it's only been a week and a half, but I'm super thrilled with her. So yeah, it's gonna be a game changer for you because then you're gonna have your time freed up to do the other front end, you know, front stage tasks of your business. So yep. Yeah. Well, if anyone has any questions, especially when it comes to Amanda's like website design, because I know a few of my own unicorns are getting into that. If you want to pick her brain anymore, just leave some comments and she's here in the group. She can come back and answer. Uh, we'll put the link to your book in there. And I also went ahead and put a link to um, you have a freebie called the five steps to create a life you love. That is there on your um, your website, and I think that's to kind of help people find their passion. Like, tell us a little bit what that is. I don't want to put words. Well, to yeah, it. it's just really you know looking at the way that you're living right now, and if you are, I think Steve Jobs is the one who said it that if I get up too many days in a row and I'm not excited about what I'm doing, I know it's time to change what I'm doing. So it's kind of like that's where the thought process for it process where it came from is you know how can you tweak things a little bit so that you actually like to get out of bed every day and you're excited about your life and you want to do these things because 
we only have one life. Like, I mean, reincarnation might be a thing, but we don't know if it's a thing. So you only have one life and you really want to waste it doing nothing and being unhappy or feeling like life is just meh. Nobody wants that. Right. So these are just some tips to help you get rolling and get your brain moving and, you know, help you figure out what you're excited about. And I love that so much. I've had one other random question, not related to any of this. I've been wanting to ask you. So you're a Sagittarius. Yes. I'm a Sagittarius. That's when's so your odd. <laughs> when's your birthday? <laughs> what day? What did you say? What day is your birthday? 17th. I'm the 16th. Shut up. Okay. So I, I wonder what so much like. Okay. I know I've like been keeping you a long time, but I have been dying to ask you about moon signs. Yeah. Because I looked mine up because I didn't know mine. And I, I'm i not like super woo, but I'm just, you know me, I'm like in the middle. I'm just happy over here. But I'm really curious, Is the moon sign is more important, isn't it, than the, your well, sun sign? So the three that I focus on the most with like the thing in my course, and the reason is because I you know, have an astrologer that I'm really good friends with. And she's like, I, I buy a lot of her stuff. And she's explained a lot of this to me that your sun sign is like who you are. Your rising okay. sign is how the world sees you. So like I'm Sagittarius sun. So that's just like who I am. And I'm Aries Travel. rising. Aries rising. So uh, to like everybody else, they might see me as more of an Aries, but actually Sagittarius and Aries are really similar. So I don't think that's much of a stretch. And then your moon sign is like the secret parts of you that nobody else really knows. And I'm Scorpio moon, which I, which actually explains a lot when I read about what that means. But so those three things together really help you figure out ways that you can work best, in my opinion, like knowing that I'm a Sagittarius Aries and that I, I need things to change all the time. And actually Aries does that too. So um, and I'm really bad at finishing projects. Okay. So like I will get started and I'm super fired up about it. And then I kind of just like let it go because I had another idea and I want to go chase that. So I've had to kind of tweak the way that I work or like kind of hack my personality a little bit and break projects up into pieces so that it feels like this was a success and I'm, you know, I did this and it's great. And, oh, but I have this thing that I can do now. And like, it just keeps helps keep me rolling. So that's one of the things that I actually talk about in my course, because I think it's super important to know these things about yourself. Not everybody believes in it, but I think that, you know, I'm not like I read my horoscope every day or anything, but I do think that those things govern definitely things about our personalities. Yeah. And even if I think even if it's a little bit of a stretch, but even if you don't believe in that, there's that fundamental like of who you are and what you bring to the table and just knowing that, whether it's related to sun sign or moon sign or whatever. But, um, Hey, I'm really curious now, if you know your moon sign, rising sign, or just even your sun sign, will you guys put it in the comments? Let's have fun with that. And I was, I'm kind of curious. I've always been interested in this enough to not know anything, but my mom had a book in high school and I would reference it. And I, I just wanted to know more about me and I don't know, I'm just interested, especially because I'm a twin. So I'm like, well, what makes me that different than my brother? You know, like how, yeah. like with the lines, but yet we're so different. So that's why where my head go, goes. But I think we might have, do we have the same moon sign, even if we're twins? I think there's something different because of the time. It was probably, I mean, it, it's like where the moon was when you were born. So if there's a big gap in that, then definitely. And it, But if it's real close together, it's probably the same. And yeah, seven minutes is probably a little bit close for the moon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it, it's possible you were born over the gap, you know, of it changing signs. And that could explain a lot. I'm going to go down that rabbit hole right now and let my kids think <laughs> I'm in a Facebook Live. But thank you so much for joining us. This is so fun. I had fun yeah. chatting with you. And yeah. Oh, I, you're, you're one of my favorite people online. So thank you so much for having me. And I'm super glad that we met when we did. All right. Uh, I have no like awesome clothes for this. So let me get better at that. Next is Amanda <laughs> online. She's on Instagram. Follow her uh, website, follow her on Facebook. And then if you're interested in kind of her coaching, if you're like wondering what to do with your business, or maybe there's some other aspect of your life where you're looking to kind of make some bold moves. Amanda calls herself a boldness coach. She could be the one for you. And she also has some pretty cool apparel online if you want to check it out. 
So lots of good little plugs for you. So we'll, and your podcast, I forgot about it. Her podcast is really fun to listen to. She talks to a lot, a of lot going on. You do. <laughs> but I think it's fun as a VA, like trying to work for you. I think it's fun because you have so many little things going on. It's, just, it's all about like focusing on like what makes you money and where you're going in the future. But I think, I think it's just cool because you didn't limit yourself to being just a VA, you know, yeah. the whole world has exploded where you're your own brand and, you know, micro influencer and boldness coach. So it's pretty cool. So, okay. We will chat later. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thanks. Bye. Bye.